Effect, episode 013, The Alien and UFO Complex, part 2. Let's go, mate. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, let's put a fucking... You want to introduce someone? Yeah, little guy? I want to introduce little Steven. This guy is a little fucking warrior. He's, what, 15, 14 years old? Yeah. 15, 14 years old. He's a little palm, little warrior. But uh, I haven't accepted his... You know, he's going to pass away sooner or later, but I wanted him to get a little exposure at intellects. <laughs> <laughs> and Pepe's over there, too, but Pepe, he's a little young buck. Yeah, he's, he's got little, a ways to go. You know, he's got a ways to go. That guy got a couple, what, days left? <laughs> Shut the fuck. <laughs> Maybe, no, not that guy, no. Not that guy, no way. But we didn't call him Steve. He was already named like that by yeah. some kids. But... <laughs> All righty. All righty. All right, let's go ahead and get this kicked off. The Alien and UFO Complex Part 2. And in this episode, we will be dissecting the accounts of David Grush and veering off into a void of information that he spoke of in the congressional hearings and other long-form interviews. We will attempt to come to some truth, but understand that with no current evidence, the greatest tool is speculation. There has been dialogue of the United States government possessing non-terrestrial spacecrafts and their pilots for almost 100 years. And there has been hints and signs in our history for thousands of years. We can make a simple connection regarding aliens in our universe, but what about the possibilities of entities coming from another universe or another dimension? Let's let's go. Go. Um, quick note there. Again, we've we've spoken about this in previous podcasts, but a universe, when we mention universe, that is our known existence. That is a universe as we know it. And as we mentioned briefly in um a previous podcast, string theory opens the possibility that our known existence possibly works in bubbles uh well sorry no think of it as bubbles um and there's multiple bubbles in true existence and our universe is just ours and there's a possibility that there's multiple bubbles that are universes in their own respective which is fucking super complicated and we're not scientists we've never claimed to uh be scientists or anything of the of the sorts but it's nevertheless, it's theoretical speculation. And nevertheless, you know, if we take people that have dedicated their entire lives um, and what they speak of, they, you know, they have 30 years in the profession and they say that the math checks out. Now, I'm not uh, incredibly knowledgeable to do the math myself. So we'll have to take their word for it at that. And that being said, isn't it crazy how it's like we have like our known existence, like what we know, like all our science, we, we just take take the words of people that have dedicated their life to that. Like we don't tech, we don't know if the world is round. We just take science's words for it. Well, yeah, it's uh, what I came, what I said the other day about. It's funny how doing your own research. But you're actually just doing research of other people's research. <laughs> so it's like, are you really doing yeah. your own research? I don't know. Whatever it is, I think it's better than, uh, you know, yeah. some mainstream. And, like, uh, and a quick comment on that. This is why, this is probably also why historical evidence has so much um, credibility. Because historical evidence, you can do your own research and go to the source with, you know, certain scriptures and certain archaeological findings. You can go to the source and do your own research that way. Um, but as far as pushing the boundary and pushing, you know, new research, did you have to, you have to, you have to devote your entire life towards one you know towards one frontier and Kinda like Ann Cyphers yeah like literally Ann Cyphers from Mesoamerica the Olmecs yeah um another thing on the topic is um do you know Eric 
His name is, he's been on the uh, JR, JRE, Eric Weinstein. Is that his name? Oh, that, uh, fuck yeah, bro. That guy's smart as fuck. Yeah, this fucking guy, he is pushing, first of all, he's one of the reasons why um, I love science so much is because he pushes science to, I don't know how to put this into words, but he pushes it to like how, and, and he calls out people like, like Brian Green and Machu um, uh, <laughs> Kaku, Michu Kaku, Michu, yeah, and he 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 calls them out and he tells them, you know, what the reality is. You know, they've been studying string theory for decades, and they haven't came to no new conclusions. They've been studying the same theoretical theories their entire life, and they don't push. They they're stagnant. They don't push it. They don't say that you know what maybe this doesn't work. Let's look at something else. Mm. And they've spent generations. All the all the things that I know about string theory are because of them, and they're all relatively old lectures that they've given years ago, and they're still giving the same lectures. And this is why I like Eric Weinstein because he says that, look, we've pushed we've pushed this theory so far, we can't push it no more. We don't have any new understandings. And their argument is that, as technology and as new minds come into play, they can work off of these theories, but. Eric Weinstein is relatively um, realistic when it comes to that. When it comes to that. And so is uh, Avi Loeb is the same way as well. Avi Loeb is a professor at Harvard, I think, or one of the prestigious colleges. And he's the one that gained credibility or gained um, publicity through Oumuamua. Remember? Oh, yep, yep, yep. Through the, that one. Uh... Um, the first it was like a, the first known interstellar object that has came from outside our solar system. It sucks that all this stuff that has like Mumu was pretty a while ago, and we were young. <clears throat> I mean, I was young, and I didn't know nothing about it. And then it's kind of sad that now that it passed and whatnot, you know, um, I'm older at an age where. All this is, you know, like, damn, I wish I was wiser, I guess, oh, to took, understand yeah. all this stuff. All right, boss. Well, sorry for that sidetrack and side tangents, but let's go ahead and get this kicked off. Like I said, I want to go ahead and focus on the congressional hearings with David Grush. That congressional hearing was, when was that? Do you remember? No. Uh, I can't remember, but it was a while ago, and I didn't want to come out with another alien and UFO complex without having, can I say, more, without having enough research, or sorry, I didn't want to speak on David Grish without, without having- Without going nowhere. With, yeah, without going nowhere, and it's been, it's been a couple of weeks since the congressional hearings. There's been Months. a lot of different takes- on the congressional hearing and David Grush himself, I've had the time to fully try to get some sort of grasp with the words that he comes from. I've been working on, you know, just digging into what the rabbit hole of the alien and UFO complex really is. And I think I have come to some sort of a conclusion and to say that I don't think David Grush is a plant. Um, I think that what he says is his truth, and I think that what he says is in part, is in part, like I said, nothing to veer us off from something else that's happening. You get me? Like, yeah, what he's saying because, is... Because usually a lot of people think that once some UFO happens, whether it's at a mall or a congressional hearing, that it veers us from the real... Yeah, truth of whether an Epstein list or, mm -hmm. or a sort of like that. Yeah. So, and not only that, but this, if I'm not mistaken, this was the first congressional hearing mm -hmm. relate in relationship to UAPs and UFOs. Um, actually, I probably can correct you on that. I don't think it is. I think before we had one, but it wasn't. It was very broad. It was mm -hmm. brought up. Mm. I, I then let me rephrase. This is the first. I think this is the first congressional hearing specifically 
to investigate UAP or UFO phenomena. Yeah. I th- um, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I can't specifically remember because I I can't remember that they had a they had they had one before, but okay. I, it was very broad. Um. So again, I want to focus on the account of David Grush in this congressional hearing. There was Ryan Graves, Commander David Forever, and David Grush. All three of them now in the UFO community need no introduction for you know what what they've witnessed. But I want to focus on the account of David Grush. And before we go into that congressional hearing and how it came about, let's go over the credibilities of David Grush. He has served this country for 14 years, um, and he continues to serve this country for coming out as a whistleblower. So thank you for your service. And on the note, thank you, all public law enforcement, all military aid for your services. Thank you for your services. Without you, intellects would not be able to, we wouldn't be able to make a podcast. Now, let's look at his credibilities. So David Grush has top secret clearance, which is the highest clearance that you can achieve. And he's attained that with polygraph uh, to make sure that he has mental uh, stability and capabilities to be able to have access with these top clearances. Um, His key specialties are in space domain awareness security management cyber program evaluation um interrogation and of course he has military experience he did serve um in the wars in afghanistan and iraq um and from what i can tell he has been in intelligence for all of his career um it looks like when he first went into military he had Acquired um, Air Force intelligence officer training, and he's relatively been influenced in the intelligence atmosphere, which I'm not sure if you know, but he worked in intelligence uh, before he came out as a whistleblower. Yep. So for 14 years, this guy has been going at it in this. And you can, if you guys have want to do your own research, you can find his, um, what do you call it? When you have, uh, when you want to give like a, for a company. For your credibility, your backgrounds, your resume, your resume. Yeah, his resume can be found at docs.house.gov. Um, and you guys can look at all this stuff for yourself. But never to say less, he is um, he's a very credible person. I got this quick description via Wikipedia that is pretty accurate to the information that I that I was looking into. Um, just worded a lot more neatly than what I could come up with. Uh, which is this. David Charles Grush is a decorated Afghanistan combat veteran and former Air Force intelligence officer who worked in the National Geospatio Intelligence Agency, NGA, and the NRO to the Unidentified Area Phenomena Task Force. From late 20... From... Tw- whoa. Uh, from late 2021 to July 2022, he was the co-lead for UAP analysis at the NGA and its representative to the task force. He assisted in drafting the National Defense Authorization Act of 2023, which includes provisions for the reportings of UFOs, including whistleblower protections and exemptions to non-disclosure orders and agreements. Congressional interest in the UFO sightings immediately prior to Grush's public came, claims, surrounded questions about the four objects that the Air Force shot down in February 2023. Again, these are per Wikipedia, but this description is accurate to the information that is out there that you guys can, again, look at yourselves. And do you have any questions by any? No, no, I know. I know David Grush pretty decently well. Um, to me, he doesn't really seem like a guy to that he's bullshitting Mm -hmm. i don't know like in that ufo community i don't like uh with george knapp or or jeremy corbell those are people like us and whatever if you want to call them journalists or whatever but i don't know those are more kind of bullshitters to me than a david grush or a ryan graves but Um, i could be wrong you know yeah that's just that's just the, the way i feel it because it's just every time i hear you're Jeremy Corbell, they always got something, but they can't show it. So it's like, shut the fuck up. But, <laughs> but I don't know. I just, 
Um, hey, and I know it's complicated. I know it's complicated, and I know I'm being very arrogant and whatnot. But I just, mm, I don't know. To me, they're kind of losing some yeah, credibility. I get what you mean. Um, and I'm with you. But if I was to defend them, I would say that these things they have they're trusted by people like David Grush. They're like, look, I'm gonna give you this information. I will show you, but you can't leak this. If you leak this, you're gonna ruin my life. So this is also in the in the aspects that they're coming from. You know, it's we're, we're gonna cover one of the UFOs that Jeremy Corbell uh, leaked. He leaked footage about it. We're gonna cover it later during uh, this podcast. But he leaked he leaked the video for us, but he just can't say where it was at, yeah. who leaked it to yeah. him, and it's because uh, this is why we named this the alien and UFO complex. We named it because it's similar to the military industrial complex. If you try to fuck with people, they will come after you and they will kill you. Mm. And we will find out, you know, some information that happened during the congressional hearings with David Grush. It's the same thing. This UFO phenomena, they will harm you and this is why we named it and this is part and partly about like i said um to speak on jeremy corbell's behalf this is why he can't come out with a bunch of this stuff which i get it you know it's the same thing what uh eric weinstein says where the fuck is the pictures at where are our high resolution photos at where is all the evidence that can show us about this phenomenon besides blurry footage besides you know footage that comes from a fucking you know from from a blackberry you know fucking camera and shit yeah. like that but as as much as like i said i was being arrogant and it's not i don't have nothing against jeremy corvo or George uh, Knapp. yeah on the contrary yeah we, we, i if yeah. i was to ever go out fucking hiking because this is one of my things i'm gonna fucking manifest as much as i want i'm gonna hike if i'm hiking and i fucking sleep somewhere out in the wild and i see something and i i always have cameras with me and i get something that's probably the first person i'm gonna <laughs> probably tell so you know but uh aside from that um oh fuck what i was gonna say i'm gonna say something but yeah i just you know it's just it's just one of those things where i also know that this is kind of like some security clearance and as mm -hmm. an america first type of person uh sorry like i would rather have them know and not say anything than our arrivals or enemies you know have this information as well because you know believe it or not there's uh how they uh how one of my old uh, um co-workers would say it there's eyes in the skies mm -hmm. so yep uh keep that in mind because i'm the same way um so that's why i don't trust yeah, you know we got we got to protect america's interest and if that means not knowing, then it's a small price to pay. As long as yeah. it's America's, we the people's interest. And we're going to actually go off on this later in our conversations. Because as we find out, the American people are being fucked over with. And we're going to oh. go down the, right, the rabbit hole. And this is what this whole phenomena is about. Is about the American people aren't are being lied to. And there has been... It's not the first time. <laughs> and there has been a, a campaign, a government cover-up campaign decades in the making. Hopefully, we'll uncover part of that during this podcast. But let's go ahead and go back to this. Now, during David's time in intelligence, he was coming across networks and hidden information from the public and from Congress, again, uh, the comment that you just made, not even Congress, not even our government knows about some of this phenomena that are going on. And he started to gain awareness of all the secrecy. And as he started to look into files that he was most likely not in the need to know, I'll cover that term here in a little bit, his superiors and other players started to threaten him and abuse him administratively and possibly physically as well. Now, what I've, according, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but according to, if, if I'm not mistaken, so you have security clearances, so top secret and all this different uh, security clearances, but in order to access certain information, you also have to have the need to know. So, for example, let's say you have the highest clearance, which is top secret, and you're looking into all this other information just because you have that clearance, that you'll, you'll come up as a red flag because you don't have the need to know. 
So for example, this is just hypo just so you can get an understanding of this. If I have the highest clearance possible and I'm just like, oh, fuck, uh, what's something crazy? Um, a project Stargate, you know, with, you can access different portals or, or no, let's just keep it UFOs. And I'm looking into UFO files that I, that don't correspond with what my actual job is. And I'm looking into all this other stuff. I don't have the need to know, which again, is going to come out red flags and you'll, they'll come after you. This is what was happening with David Grush. He has the security clearance and part of his uh, job was to filter out satellite um, satellite images and what possible threats could be to filter these out. And he was going in and he was starting go, going through the rabbit hole and started to ask people, you know, colleagues of his, what these things were and stuff like that. His job was just to filter out information. And he was inquiring regarding these phenomena that were going on. And this is how he came across information that he did not have the need to know. Um, to how I understand it. And a quick note, keep in mind that this is all currently under investigation as a time at the time that this podcast will probably be released. It would probably still be investigation. It's been in, in under investigation for quite some time now. So just keep that in mind that we don't have the full story and it probably will be a while before we get the full story. Who knows if we even get it now. We'll probably get this story first. Then the real. <laughs> now, the account of David Grush. Stupid. One day, David Grush was coming home from work, and at his home, he saw something that petrified him. Something that ultimately was his reasoning for filing his whistleblower came, uh, complaint. The events that led up to this confrontation between David Grush and this intimidating entity was the result of David angering or causing displease with someone or something at the secret organization that deals with non-terrestrial origins. Now, what he saw and experienced will hopefully be disclosed once this investigation comes to an end. But unfortunately, in the meantime, we are left to speculate. Now, why is speculation so important? Is because once the cat's out of the bag and once the government is given that long leash, and does not disclose information to we, the people, it's usually too late and the damage is already done. Now, again, whenever David Grush came home and was came face to face with this intimidating entity, um, he feared for his life and he sought publicity. And now who's this intimidating factor was, I'm not sure, but if I'm not mistaken, David Grush and his wife are both were both in the military now what could frighten a combat veteran that is used to this stuff i'm not sure but it's, it frightened him to the point that he feared for his life and he sought out publicity same thing like what bob lazar did he probably saw a, a black yukon outside of his house <laughs> with dinted windows and shit and there every time at a every day i don't know mm -hmm. now this is probably far-fetched and I kind of even want to bring this up, but what if it could have been, what if he could have came face to, because he specifically, he's, he's said, I think in a, in the Tucker Carlson interview that he said some one or something were his words. And again, I kind of didn't want to bring this up because it's far-fetched and it's more of the, of the folklore within this mm -hmm. topic but what if he seen the men in black now the men in black are part of ufo folklore and described as mysterious and intimidating figures who are believed to visit individuals who have witnessed ufos or possess knowledge about extraterrestrial life according to various accounts and stories these individuals often wear black suits and are extremely secretive and their identity and affiliation remain unknown. They reportedly intimidate or threaten witnesses into silence, aiming to keep information about UFOs and aliens secret from the public. The origins of these stories are unclear, and there are no concrete evidence to confirm the existence of such organizations. The men in black have become popular, have become a popular element in conspiracy theories, and have been portrayed in various forms of 
um, media such as the movies with Will Smith and the Men in Black. Predictive pro programming. Yes, predictive programming. I'm glad you say that because we know as a 100% certainty that the government has a multi-decade campaign to cover up UFOs. In particular, label them, labeling them as conspiracy theorists, labeling them as a media twist with the men in black and with um, War of the World. So when we think of UFOs, when we think of men in black, you think of the movies with Will Smith. Mm -hmm. So this is why I didn't want to bring it up because it's been ridiculed. But it's important because the U the government covers this up. The government wants to manipulate your views on such topics to so they can just seem outlandish uncredible so again this is um 100 speculation but what could make a combat veteran fear for his life i i don't know uh this is just one possibility out of something but i found it interesting to bring up I found it very uh, kind of got chills when I heard him uh, speak about that. I think uh, I think on the JRE, mm -hmm. you know, Joe Rogan, when he talked about it, I was like, what the fuck? And I had that same thought that you did. Like, bro, this guy's been fucking, he's seen shit. He's been through shit. Like, what? He's been to war. He's been in the intelligence community. He's. Yeah, so it's like, yeah. That is what scared me because I'm like, fuck. Mm hmm. Now, quick comment on that. I came across of chilling information on this, and it's probably not going to make it on the podcast, but I was thinking of probably coming out with a, a different form of video to put all this information on, on the screen so people can see it in a more retention form with concrete evidence type of stuff. But I don't know what you think about that, but... Very chilling information when you dive into this topic, specifically the claims of David Grush, which is why he came out. He came out so the people could know the generalities and uh, of of these topics. Now, I don't know. Maybe it was just an armed aggressor. Maybe he just had a gun pointed at his face or something. But I don't know. I just thought it was something. It came to mind when I first like you were saying, um, heard him tell the story. How does one, uh, how does one come out to public? Like if I did see something or whatever, you know, just, just hit up the, the local journalist or something and, and hopefully it goes, I guess, viral or, I mean, now we have social media, so now we can just post it, but like, how credible is that? You know, mm -hmm. how do you, how does one do that? So in David Grush's perspective, he had to file a whistleblower complaint. So this is what it, this is kind of the parameters of it. Oh shit. And a whistleblower discloses information he or she uh reasonably believes is evidence such as a violation of any law, rule or regulation which this phenomenon fits the criteria. A gross mismanagement fits this criteria. A gross waste of funds fits this criteria. Uh, an abuse of authority, David Grush's claims, fits this criteria. A substantial or specific danger to public health, the UFO phenomenon, is um, is possibly um, a threat to national security, fits this criteria. And a substantial or specific danger to public safety fits this criteria. Uh, so he filed this and he needed to file this because they they need to investigate it lawfully and he can't come out with, you know, because you need certain uh, security clearances and stuff like this, which is what's currently going on. He, a lot of the things that David Grush says he can't speak upon. He can give us generalities, but he can't give us specifics because of this investigation. But that's basically it. Can anyone whistleblow or is it just uh, people in in the government? So, for example, if you come across something, it doesn't necessarily count as because it's in public information. You know, the only the way you would whistleblow is if you work for a company 
and you need to seek protection against that company from coming at you legally. Mm. And so, so, for example, if David Grush flat out told us what the organizations were, he would be prosecuted because it's in violation of, I don't know, maybe an NDA agreement yeah. or mm. uh, it's a violation to our national security, which at the end of the day, he says it, we just said it. America's interest should be first, and we can't have any foreign adversary knowing our deets. Yeah, because I saw that gross uh, spend funds, and right away I thought of well, Ukraine and Israel. So I was like, how do I whistleblow that? <laughs> well, you got beggar Zelensky sucking America's dick 24 7 to try to get more fucking billions of dollars. But that's but we're actually gonna go over some of these funds and how these things work um, per David Grush. Now the congressional hearing happened um, seven twenty six of last year. Was it? Yeah, oh, it was yeah, a while yeah, ago. Yes, yeah, it was, it was yeah. very it was yeah seven twenty six of twenty thirteen, and I have so much notes from that congressional hearing. And a quick comment, and I'll make this comment again at the end of this video. If you would like to do this research yourself, I'd recommend four areas to start. Um, Jerry podcast with David Grush, the congressional hearings, which is very public. You can find it anywhere. Just look up David Grush congressional hearings. It's a little over two hours long. Uh, Jerry podcast with Diana Walsh. Uh, oh my God, great fucking podcast. And... Diana. The Lex Friedman podcast with Gary Noland. They all fit in the same atmosphere. And they're all great areas to start if you want to get some sort of um, your own research in relationship to the congressional hearings. Now, fuck, I don't even know if we're going to go through all the notes that I got during this congressional hearings, but let's just go ahead and kick this off and we'll see where this ends up now um representative burchette um in his opening statement proposed and this is a interesting comment in his opening statement of the congressional hearings he proposed legislation for the faa once an airline pilot witnesses a ufo or uap report uh, and reports it to the faa it would go directly to congress but and i quote him the intelligence community did not like that and the bill was not even heard in the committee they proposed legislation so this can go directly to congress but it it wasn't even heard by the committee how fucking crazy is that you can see that there's a fucking monopoly going on with this phenomena. Um, and then again, Burchette asked Grush if there has ever been in any active U.S. government disinformation campaign to deny the existence of unidentified area phenomena. Grush affirmed that there has been indeed such a campaign. Yet he can't say anything beyond that statement. And he did say it was a multi-decade campaign to remove public's interest in this phenomena. How crazy is that? It almost sounds like a uh, fucking place um, in New Mexico with the nuclear. Like uh, at the Alamos. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. Where they try to yep. not, you know, mm -hmm. the Manhattan Project. Yep. Now, Brichette that, asked. That, that, that's just a. Uh, type of example of if people don't believe that the government would take would keep this out of you know the public mm -hmm. it's the same thing it's, 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 we're doing the same thing here all right now i'm gonna go th over some of my notes so i'm gonna the way i'm gonna go by this is on uh, the representatives some such as the senators and such that are representing congress and then i'm gonna say david's responses feel free to stop me and veer off at all i'm just gonna literally rant key points that I key points and notes that I found were eerie during the congressional hearing. So feel free to veer off on any of these comments. So Burchette asked David, has there been any retaliation or reprisals for your testimony or anything? David responds, yes, very brutal and unfortunate. The tactics they used hurt David's career and him personally. 
Burchette asks David again, do you have any personal knowledge of people being hurt in efforts to conceal these extraterrestrial technologies? David Grush responded, yes. And then he then said personally as well. Burchette asked, has anyone been murdered that you know of? Referring to the same questions of, of an effort to conceal extraterrestrial um, technologies. David responds, was that he has to be very careful about this topic. However, he directed certain information to certain authorities um, in relationship to the possibility of this knowledge. I'm not quoting directly. This I, It's just notes that I took down, so I'm not saying direct quotes. Again, you guys can look Watch. up the congressional yeah. hearings yourselves. Now, Raskins asked about his experience since coming out. Again, David responded that some of his colleagues have been brutally administratively attacked. He calls it, quote, administrative terrorism. And he describes this as administratively harming, you know, David's or his colleagues' um, reputation because they want to protect their status or security clearances which is complete bullshit now these were my favorite exchanges throughout the entire um hearing. Th through the entire hearing um moskowitz asked david have you met have you met people with direct knowledge of non-human origin crafts david responded yes i personally interviewed those individuals moskowitz then asked have you met people with direct knowledge of advanced technologies David what David responded, yes, he was briefed on it. Moskowitz asked, do you have knowledge of advanced tech programs that are unsanctioned? David responds, yes, I do. Keep in mind, advanced tech programs that are unsanctioned. What does that mean? The people does not know them. And these, these, organ, these programs don't go through Congress. That's what he asked. Moskowitz asked, what do you mean when you say they are above congressional oversight? David, now this dialogue was a bit long, but long story short, there are programs that do not kneel to Congress. They exist and operate outside of the government and get funded by misappropriation of funds. This is where we're going to divulge a little bit into the, fund. into the funds and stuff like this. So uh, Moskowitz then says, does this mean that there is money that is set to go to a program and it doesn't, therefore it goes to some other program. David Grudge says yes, and he has specific knowledge of that. Moskowitz then asks, do U.S. corporations overcharge and then the overcharge funds go to secret programs? David Grudge says correct through something called IRAD. Why well, did a little bit of investigation regarding IRAD? And at first, I thought it was some organization that, um, some organization that operates within the government. But I think if I have it, if if I'm not mistaken, IRAD is something that every company has. And at first, I thought it was tied to the NASA, but again, I was wrong. IRAD is is a system that companies used so that they don't disclose information to the public, so that it's not public knowledge. Now, for nearly 80 years, firms have been allowed to recover some of its independently funded research and development, IRAD, costs that are part of general and administrative expenses and charged to existing contracts. Firms have the independence to decide which technologies to pursue with these funds as long as these efforts are of potential interest to department to the department. So again, these programs are being funded. Um, taxpayer government funded programs are overcharging, and then that over, and then those overcharged funds are getting filtered through these secret programs that aren't available to the public. And in this congressional hearings, we were given some sort of validity towards that. Now, 
Yes. And then Moskowitz asked about satellites and satellite imagery. Do we have images, satellite images of UFOs? David says that this was his task at NGA since they process that kind of information, but he couldn't ex uh, ex say furthermore. Yeah. Burchette then asked, is there an, uh, what special access programs um, do you need? Or no, what special access programs cover this information and how is it possible that they have evaded oversight for this long? David knows exact the names and exact tactics, but he can't say publicly. Burchette then asks, what level of security clearance is needed to access these programs? David responds, there is a difference between member access and someone like David or private, but top circuit clearance gives you access to all of these things. However, Gates, uh, Senator Gates says that sometimes you can have security clearance for certain things, but the door is shut in your face and they turn you away, even though you have top security clearance. This is what I referred to earlier in this conversation that Although you have top secret clearance or certain clearances that allow you towards to see certain things, the need to know specifies whether you can get access to it or not. And then, let's see where I want to... Okay. What, what private companies are... Burchett asks, what private companies are involved and how much taxpayer money is going to these companies? David responds and refrains that he has given this information in a private setting and has gone to details with 11 hours. He gave details for over 11 hours, giving these details and how these operations go through. But I just find it crazy how all of these things are getting filtered through the you know, through something like the black budget. And did you see that thing that uh, the Pentagon always fails an audit? Yep. They always don't know where the fuck the money is being sent through. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the problem that everybody, that Congress has is that, you know, where the fuck is this money going? Well, it, we already have all this money going to fucking bullshit, fucking proxy wars. proxy wars. And then we also have more money going, being lost and yeah, right. it's it's through this lost allocation of funds that is being filtered through these secretive programs is, isn't that crazy that if you were to miss a year of taxes the irs comes for you and knows and all this stuff but yet fucking not the irony of it though gotta give it to zolinski gotta give it to zolinski um this was another one of my favorite um, exchanges. Uh, Burleson asked, you've mentioned something about multidimensional potential. Can you elaborate? And David responds that the framework David is familiar with is the holographic principle and it derives from general relativity and quantum mechanics. So the holographic principle is picture yourself, Pedro, as a three-dimensional object, which you are casting a shadow on a two-dimensional surface. That is, in theory, what it is. And in theory, a lot of these uh, spacecrafts use this principle or, or have some sort of affiliation with this to then come from a higher dimensional plane and access our two-dimensional plane. And I took... I took quite a bit of research to research this holographic principle, but I think it's better explained through images. And there's a complete rabbit hole that says that our universe is a hologram, which is a rabbit hole that I don't really want to go into during this conversation. But think of it like this. The top picture is... Is, has nothing to do with the holographic principle, but it shows it to what it would be. The bottom uh, image basically shows you how a hologram works. You have a surface, right? You just have a, a 2D surface, but when you project light through that 2D surface of a hologram, it produces a 3D image. 
Now, the holographic principle works in these parameters. So, I'm not smart enough to truly understand this. But how it works and how this information was given to David Grush as to how these um, non-terrestrial crafts or beings access our plane could possibly not be from our universe. They could come from different dimensions, which those parameters fit accordingly to string theory. Now, above you have uh, the Big Bang and, you know, its expansion. Look at it like this. So you have the Big Bang. The Big Bang is the film that creates the hologram. And think of it like this. The Big Bang is this shape, the outside of this shape. And the light that was casted from the Big Bang then creates our physical reality. And through accessing certain characteristics of this theoretical explanation, these crafts can then bridge from a higher right reality or a higher dimension into our lower dimension. So in our case, we live on a three dimensional plane. They come from 4D to 2D or 5D to 4. I don't know. It's fucking complicated as fuck. But a quick note on this. This is the same thing of um, Plato's um, Masonic beliefs that reality is not really what we think it is. In reality, reality is light. It's energy and our physical world is nothing but a construct of essentially this holographic principle i'm telling you, it's a fucking rabbit hole that i would like to go divulge into at another time but it's it's fucking crazy yeah um when i was listening to diana is it diana or diana mm -hmm. diana talk about it i was fucking amazed by how she went into um what plato tried to do by achieving some a state of of mind and, and Plato, I Plato was onto something, and it's sad. I don't know. It almost, I don't know how to. I really don't know how to really explain it or how to go about what I was, what I'm trying to say. the The thing is that we think, and again, I refer back to historical evidence. We think that we're discovering new things. Or even in this conversation with the holographic principle and the platonic mysticism belief system, we think that our understanding or our current understanding of reality is based off of this dogmatic view of science mm -hmm. and whatever your government wants you to believe. But in reality, if you go further back in history... It seems that they had a more deep understanding of what reality truly is. And this is why I'm so fascinated with the mystic arts. Because individuals such as Plato and Socrates um, had an understanding that is sounds crazy if we describe it but in reality you like it's universally thought like this same thing with dmt and if you have these psychedelic trips and stuff like this yeah that you have the same images as somebody else having that same there's studies that have been done that they put you through this through a similar trip and they both have same same stories that that's 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 where exactly i see i didn't want to just bring up that dmt shit without having some sort of way but that but basically plato was trying to achieve some state of you know of, mind. Of, of of mind by being the healthiest by eating the cleanest by eating all this stuff too because you can achieve it without taking drugs or mm -hmm. shroom like whatever you want to call it without taking all that stuff you can achieve it like how we have how we explained it in in the podcast about you know about runners high mm -hmm. and when you look at i i don't know man i i know i'm just pointing fingers here but when you look at like like religion 
religion knew something back. I mean, they probably still do, but they for sure tried to t keep that out of us with, I don't know, just, just the discovery, just, just me knowing that, that the, like the Pope has an acorn and you're like, what, what, what the fuck? And then you, it's the, the pineal gland. Yeah, that it represents the pineal gland. Yeah, it, it, that it represents, it's like, what the fuck? Like, that's not coincidence, man. Mm hmm that is not coincidence. So then Diana explains that, you know, maybe we're looking at, at a very different point of view with the, the, these UFOs, like trying to where it's something that we can't be, we can't and understand yet. I might have some sort of an explanation regarding your statement that you just said. Gary Nolan talks about this on the Lex Freeman podcast number 262, if you guys want to look at it, into it. But he says that in historical context, what do you have? The more primitive civilizations, what do they believe in? They believe in spirits and entities such as the God of winds, the spirit of light, the spirit of fire, this and, and such forth like that. And then as you get civilized, then you have a framework of gods. You know, you go from spirits and um, paranormal entities to more civilized to gods. And then now you have you know, a God that controls people and that makes thief like that. And then you have an advanced civilization. It's not just civilized, but advanced, such as what we are today. And then what is the, what, what is after that? It's technology. So Gary Nolan explains that these things that we're seeing, these UFOs that we're seeing, they tend to evolve as human intelligence evolves. Hmm. They go from being spirits to being gods to now what is our god if we will you know somebody that's a non-believer our gods are technology and that now these entities these ufos the, the, this phenomena is showcasing itself as technology because that is our next ascension of belief or that is what our that is what everybody can uniformly agree upon is that technology can't lie, you know? And Diana, uh, Diana speaks about that. There's somebody that has been studying this and 10 years before AI came out, he was saying that this is essentially what the phenomena revolves around, that it's AI. And I think that that's not far off, but I think that that's not far off because that's how this phenomena is perceiving itself to be. Isn't that crazy that if you... Back in the day, you could say that, oh, you know, I felt some sort of presence and a spirit and this and that. And, you know, it'd be like, oh, shit, like, you know, we believe in. But now you just you're just categorized as crazy or mm -hmm. that. That's fucking that's what's crazy to me, man. That's we're too we're fucking arrogant as fuck. Holy shit. You know, even even people that believe in their perspective religion, like you we haven't gone through what they have gone through maybe mm -hmm. it they're you know and to just judge somebody by what their beliefs are that's fucking arrogant i'm sorry mm -hmm. and this is me coming from you know i don't know a person what? that really you know that just believes in god but i don't really believe in a religion type of thing mm -hmm. one thing that one thing that as i you know, one thing that I, as I research more and more and more, and it seems apparent, something that seems apparent is as we try to understand, you know, you know, these different things, you know, this gods and UAPs and technology and all these things, something that seems evident is that it's all connected. It's all religion, religion and the UAP phenomenon is is it's all connected and not just in a literal sense because everything in this universe is connected because it comes from one small point if you believe in the big bang which is currently the most credible uh theory out there but also from uh from uh i don't know how to say it from this energy perspective you know and religions have been you know they have art with ufos and uaps and stuff like that but it's all definitely connected and 
what it could be is I'm not fucking sure. Um, I mean, you you feel some presence though. You feel presence when you kneel or whatever and speak to God to whatever you believe in. You whether it's some sort of energy, you feel you feel different when you I don't know. And like I said, I I really don't like the way we just can trash someone by what they believe in. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, going back to this holographic principle, let me tell you a story that I heard from Gary Noland on the Lex Freeman podcast, and it was a private story that somebody came to Gary. Now, keep in mind who Gary Noland is. He's a professor, I think at Stanford, I might be mistaken, but he's the guy that debunked, I'm not sure if you fucking, I didn't get the picture of it, but there's this little alien, little body of an alien that that people were saying that this, um, and I'll, I'll remember it and so you can pop a picture of this. Uh, there is a picture of a little alien that was going around that people thought was an alien and he debunked it. He was able to obtain genetic material from this thing and it was human DNA. But he is, nevertheless, he's a very credible individual. So... Gary Noland received this story from a family that was driving down a busy interstate. And Ma and Pa were in front and the two kids were in the back. They had a vehicle with a panoramic sunroof. So it's just basically a roof that's glass. And when they looked up, they seen a large craft hovering over them. They looked around and noticed no one else was paying attention to the UFO. So they grabbed their phones and they started taking pictures of it. When they got home, they looked at the pictures and it was nothing like what they saw. It was still a strange object in the sky, but not that massive ship that was hovering over them. Similar to uh, the story in Zimbabwe. But in short, if this story turns out to be true, we have examples of UFOs using something like a holographic system of sorts. And... um. And a quick example of non-human technology with being able to connect to individuals directly. So remember in Zimbabwe, and we covered this in uh, uh, partially in the first, in part one of the UFO and alien complex, some of the kids received a message from these mm-hmm. entities yep. and other kids didn't. It seems that these UF, this phenomena has the ability to access certain individuals directly, such as this incident that the, this family was the only family that, that received this information and they were, they're able, they're able to connect directly to you. And this was well explained in that podcast. And Diana goes a little bit into it, but what if like this holographic principle of, UAPs is the explanation to these uh, U.S. Air Force pilots, you know, what they're perceiving. Maybe it's just a, a hologram. Like if, if you switch that glass to film it somewhere else, it would happen in- instantaneously. And it's interesting to, to think about that it could possibly well fit within this parameters of this holographic principle or holographic, you know, whatever you want to call it. But I don't know. I don't know. It's an interesting topic to say the least. But, but, and something that fits with this holographic principle. Um, when I was doing research for this, I came across a CIA dis- the declassified document on UFOs and electromagnetic waves. And somewhere along the lines, there was some scientists trying to harness electromagnetic waves, which hypothetically, if one could harness and control electromagnetic waves in advanced waves, it could potentially be used for space travel. And I think this theory fits within um, Star Trek and the warp drive, how they just ride the electromagnetic waves and I could be completely wrong on this but it just propels them and you can almost reach areas instantaneously 
but electromagnetic waves don't travel differently. They can travel through the vacuum of space. And it's it's a mixture between energy, which this is just me speculating and this is just me, you know, not having a scientific background, which the holographic principle works with some sort of energy being perceived to create that bridge between the a higher plane and a lower plane. And that bridge of energy, if you could harness it, that could be the bridge that David Grush is talking about. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. In um in that here, let me see where I have it at. In this um in that classified in that declassified a document um again something that i find interesting is in that declassified document by the cia there was a report about flying saucers and how to replicate them now that article was written by vladimir lagovisky and was titled flight to alpha centaurus and that document was created in 1992 and wasn't approved for release till 2010 and the article goes into some length to give examples as to how we could create such crafts. And like everything, the only problem is technological advancement. But a key component was that harnessing of electromagnetic fields. And a note, something that they mentioned as well was um, that the perfect structure to a UFO to travel interdimensionally was a spherical shape and one of the perfect structures that a ufo would need to have to maneuver in our atmosphere is a saucer-like shape because of our atmosphere and what are the most interest what are the most sightings that we see of spherical or saucer-like shape so the saucer was the was the first the flying saucer that was the f first ever report or at least the first one that got traction. That's why we know of, um, that's why we know of, uh, that's how this whole phenomenon got started. How about those triangles? Triangles is, again? Is yeah, is, is, another is another one. Um, This video, I'm, I think I sent this to you on Instagram. It, it came across on a reel, but it showed of, uh, and this isn't a spherical shape. It's like, Hexy die. I don't know. It's a weird shape. All right, but check this one out. Yeah, that's crazy. This was from a pilot. Look at that. Look at that. Fuck. That can't necessarily be debunked. That's that spherical looking fucking shape. And doesn't really look spherical. It's not spherical. This is uh like a uh you know I don't even know what the shape is called. This is like hexi diagonal. It's I don't know. It, like a square with pointies. I don't know. It's not spherical, but a pentagon? No. Hexagon. No. It's it's all fucking it's it's I don't know. But it's one of those things that can't necessarily be uh, debunked, you know? It's not mm -hmm. a fucking balloon. It's dark. If it was a something, it's not reflective. And it seems like it's going... It's but, at a high yeah. altitude. It's zooming. I don't know, mate. But... There is definitely... It's a, definitely a real phenomena. It's just so basically what you kind of want to get about this is like maybe we're looking at it as a different we're trying to we should view it as a in a different type of lens as well. Yes. And that's why David Grush uses the term non-human because he doesn't like using the term extraterrestrial because it could possibly not be coming from this universe. He explains it as there's a possibility that it's coming from another dimension. Uh, one thing that really uh caught my attention was 
Diana. Um, and hold up, let me, what's her, I want to, I think we keep talking about Diana, but we don't really, Diana Walsh, is that what it is? Diana Walsh, so Diana Walsh, uh, one thing that very intrigued me, bro, I gotta take was, a big ass leak, okay, and we're back, uh, what was I gonna say, okay, so <clears throat> one thing that I found very, um, Interesting was, I've heard David Grush talk about or call this stuff biologics. And when I heard Diana say it, I was like, huh, Diana's been doing this shit for a long ass time and she's been calling it biologics. And then she even mentioned it about how she was surprised that David even used biologics. So that kind of even gave it. A more type of credibility a credibility to david grush's claims where i was like oh shit like you know it was mm-hmm. it was it kind of connected the dots yeah <clears throat> which that podcast was fucking wild too uh, and she's the one that spoke about this platonism as well of uh you know achieving that State of mind. State of mind. That different state of mind, yeah. And then Joe Rogan has always, has said on this podcast for a long time, like maybe that state of mind isn't, doesn't reside within this, you know, reality. Maybe it resides somewhere else. But yeah, it's very interesting to say the least. Um, Yeah, very interesting to say the least. But... But yeah. Oh, I wanted. I actually wanted to show you. Now that I uh, talk about, not that it's biological or anything, but uh, talk about that fucking UFO from that Jeremy Corbell leaked. Remember, you remember seeing it? I do not. What? <clears throat> Holy it's... shit! I haven't seen this. Holy fuck! Bro, you've had to see this. No, like I, I keep up to date with Jeremy Corbell. Actually, maybe I. Cause I probably am, I unfollowed him. It's it's that <laughs> I unfollowed him when I I just couldn't listen to the second podcast when he went on Joe Rogan. I mean, maybe he's been there more, but I was like, oh my god, same with the same shit. I can't show you. I can't show you. It mm-hmm. just pissed me off when I just unfollowed him. And I have nothing against him though. Yeah, uh, I'd love to talk to him one day. So yeah, this fucking UFO looks like the probe droid from Star Wars. Take a look, look at it. Whoa. You've never seen this one? No. Yeah, they call it the jellyfish UFO. Oh, I mean, I've heard about it, but... Whoa. Now, let me tell you a little bit about this fucking thing. So, of course, Jeremy Corbell, who needs no introduction in the UFO community, leaked this footage and vetted it for fucking over three years. He So, he's been studying this footage. Now, the full video is... Over 30 minutes long, and it takes place in an undisclosed location in Iraq in 2018, which was a U.S. military base. And per Jeremy, all information regarding this incident, such as names and intelligence um, organizations, is under investigation and uh, information will be provided. Jeremy Corbell says that he has the name of the intelligence organization that has this footage. But when it was taken that very same day, it was confiscated. Um, How it was leaked, of course, he can't mention any details as to how it was leaked. But what I find interesting is that this UAP object was hovering around the military base and was witnessed by multiple people. Classified footage that has not yet been released shows the UAP flying over a body of water going into the water for 17 minutes. And then emerging very slowly from the water and then eventually shoots up into the sky. It has all properties of... Uh, hmm. Does of, it show all that? No, no, that's that footage has not yet been oh, okay. um, disclosed. However, Jeremy Corbell says that it's with 100% certainty this will, this is what occurred and will hopefully eventually be in, uh, will be show. Which, all properties of UFO. Hover capabilities. At first, when I first seen this, I was like, could it have possibly been a drone? 
Well, it goes in the water for 17 minutes and then shoots up into the sky at alarming rates. Don't know of a drone that does that. No, unless your DJI does that. <laughs> Fuck no. I don't even want to shoot that shit in the rain. Um, yeah, it was. I, see, mm. you know, I'm I'm very excited to be able to cover this and to continue to cover this because we can one day look back upon this in a year, two years, four or five and be like, remember that? Remember that? Look at where we're at now. And it all comes down to like, you know, skepticism is, I don't know, but like, is that, is, is that a new weapon that, you know, U S has too, you know, it, we just, we really don't know anything about this dude. Mm -hmm. We don't know anything about this. And I'm very excited to, uh, especially 2024 is going to unveil. Oh, it's a f gonna be a Dude, fucking crazy year. It's just always keeping up to the, uh, uh, keeping an update mm -hmm. updated with this. Yeah. Now, do you know about that? Uh, David Grush talks about it now. We're speaking about him. Um, he he brings up it's another example of of why people want to you know, if people that don't believe that the, that the government or somebody um is trying to because we know that even the government doesn't know about some of this stuff so i don't know mm -hmm. uh it, about basically an agenda of keeping this out of the public or hush hush uh, david grush talks about a 1933 italy uh mm -hmm. crash accident or site or whatever yeah that was all credible but it was kept hush hush mm -hmm. yeah uh very little knowledge upon that, uh, but long story short, uh, Mussolini at the time, wasn't it? Um, something crashed on the lands of Italy, and he contacted Germany and was like, hey, is this fucking yours? Yep. <clears throat> and they were like, no, but let's investigate it together. And then this is where the whole rabbit hole of the Nazis having UFOs comes into play with Operation High Jump and bases in antarctica and all this crazy stuff that sounds crazy but could possibly have some origins of truth and then per once the war was over per vatican intelligence resources they helped the united states acquire this craft that crashed there and now is somewhere within the united states government's secret bases uh, in short, is what that story is. Um, I would like to cover that yeah. particular and incident in details for a later podcast. Though it also goes back to like all these conspiracy people saying that oh, they only care about the USA, only about the USA, which we've already have our theory where if there is a higher entity that knows more than what we do, I'd fucking you know who would you want to cover? The fucking greatest country in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's not, yeah. but not only that, but there's been sightings everywhere all over the world. It's just the ignorance of people that maybe haven't done enough research to, to look into different sightings in different places. Yeah. Um, as you delve into this fucking phenomena that is UAP or UFOs, they're all over the place. And some of the comments that, David Gersh speaks about in relationship to like satellites and all this stuff. It sounds to me that it's littered with UAPs and UFOs out, out there beyond, you know, beyond, uh, you know, beyond our atmosphere. And a lot of these, I've, I've seen reportings of a lot of these, like, you know, um, telescopes that we have pointed out at the skies they see things, but they're focused on something, you know, millions of light years away and they don't investigate of what is, you know, it's a bird. They don't investigate it, which the future of the transparency of UAPs is bright because of Avi Loeb. Again, Avi Loeb was the guy that, you know, gained popularity traction with his thoughts on Oumuamua and thinking that it's a UFO or of some sort of a probe that's because it has properties that don't 
correspond with our current understanding, such as comets and stuff like that. Um, he is actually setting up facilities and his own satellite images that will focus solely on seeing if it's really a bird that goes across a telescope or if it's something else. And he is focused on providing very high quality resolution photos of UFOs or, UAP or UAPs, uh, not these shitty images that we fucking get all the time like that shit. Um, and he is, he's tired of this government bullshit and secrecy. He's has funds. He's had, he's obtained funds from billionaires or millionaires and he is, uh, he's taking matters into his own hands. So luckily the transparency of UAPs are in good hands with him as well as independent investigators like Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp. Hopefully we can get a lot less storytelling and a lot more evidence from mm -hmm. them in the future. But I think regardless, this uh, can of worms will eventually be uh, opened up and I'm excited to see what it will unveil. The future is always right. Mm -hmm. But other than that, um, I think we can leave it at that good note. Unless you have anything else to add. No, I mean... I, I I think I'm pretty good. Um, we covered basically David Grush in this, mm -hmm. and in the next uh, Alien UFO complex, we'll cover maybe different sightings around the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted yeah, and on the same topic, I wanted something different from the first one. The first one we kind of just covered sightings yep. very vaguely, which I'd like to you know cover those again. But this one was particularly around the secrecy surrounding this phenomenon. And it's in it's it's pretty trippy how <clears throat> Congress doesn't even know about all these informations. So this 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 video that Jeremy Corbell obtained, this was taken by an intelligence organization. Congress did not know about this. He's providing information to the government of who has this video. That's crazy to me. Why? And and it goes back with the military industrial complex because they're the ones making these things. Boeing, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, General Dynamics, Northrop Gunman. These are these are one of the biggest military organiz military industrial complex companies that are out there. They're the ones that have these informations because they're why they're trying to make the latest technology to sell to the US government. And it's sad that that's where we're at. You know, our our latest or our military equipment is in the hands of corporations that are only, you know, that are only interested to make a large, pretty, pretty large profit. But it's sad, but I don't know. I don't know how other else would we advance. What's sad about it is the complex is the complex part of it. Like, why do these agency, why is an intelligence agency in a U.S. military base in charge of this footage? Why is this footage not, not in, I get what you're trying to say. In, you know, not in con, why, why isn't it being filtered through Congress? Why isn't it, why is this national security, you know, topic? Why don't we know about it? Why is there a, multi-decade cover-up campaign by the u.s government you know that's the sad part about it but we'll go ahead and leave it at that though um yeah it's it's crazy i'm i'm excited for the future but other than that that's all i got and if you have other shit we don't know if you want to cut uh, or if you want us to cover some shit look into something mm. would gladly do so all right other than that Episode 013, The Alien and UFO Complex, Part 2, The Account of David Grush. On to the next one. Let's go. Thank you, guys.